You've never seen a restaurant like this in your life, after the chef introduces the name of the dish. Would you dare to go to such a restaurant? But some people do. Tyler was a food lover. One day he approached Margot. He invited her to a fancy restaurant. This restaurant only serves 12 people at a time. Each person pays $1,250. Margot couldn't understand the world of the rich. She said, Fucking kidding, right? What are we eating a Rolex? Soon the siren sounded. 12 people boarded the yacht one by one. Among them, there were veteran food critics. There were investors, movie stars, and a wealthy couple with the codes of wealth. After everyone was seated, the waiter brought dessert. It's oysters with caviar on top. Before the meal began, Tyler took out his cell phone to take a picture. As if what's in front of him isn't food, it's a valuable work of art. After tasting it, he complimented it on how delicious it was. Margot didn't feel his excitement at all. Too hard. It was just plain food to fill her stomach. When we disembarked. The waiter checked everyone's information. Margot wasn't on the list. Tyler explained. It wasn't Margot who was supposed to come with him because she couldn't make it. That's why she was replaced. Then the waiter showed them around the island. There's a lot of things here. We grow all the ingredients for our cooking to ensure that every dish tastes fresh. During the tour, a small hut standing alone. It looked mysterious. Tyler wanted to see it, but the waiter stopped him. That's the chef's room. It's off limits. Soon they arrived at the restaurant. As the door slowly closed, Margot looked back. Her instincts told her there was more to this place than meets the eye. When they were seated, all eyes were drawn to the busy chefs with their exquisite precision and professionalism. As if they were not cooking, they were carving a perfect work of art. Tyler pulled Margot in for a closer look. What he didn't expect, the chef called Tyler by his first name and said the chef had information about all the guests tonight. Tyler didn't look surprised. It was Margot who thought it was strange. It was just a dinner. She didn't know why they were being so meticulous. What puzzled Marco was this, after the waiter whispered to the chef, the chef's eyes were on her. He didn't look so good. Soon the chef finished his speech. The first course of the evening was served. It's called Island Garnish. It's like a natural island. The chef's presentation combined nature and mankind and other esoteric ideas. Although everyone didn't understand, but they listened patiently. When it was time to taste it, everyone had their own opinion. Tyler was moved to tears. The gourmet thinks it's full of the spirit of the sea. The three investors thought it was ordinary. You like this? The outer food? Mm. Yeah, it's solid. Anyway, these high rollers don't care. They don't care what the food tastes like. They come here because it's a passport to status and position, and it's something they come brag about to others. The second course is about to be served. This time, the chef is different from the rest. What kind of surprise will he bring to you? This is the first carnal movie of the new year. The audience is dumbfounded. A five-star Haitian banquet has taken a life. Who would have thought? Spending $1,250 for a meal. But what you get is a bread feast without bread. Looking at the empty plate, only a few drops of different flavors of bread sauce. The bread, which is the main course, was nowhere to be found. Everyone looks at each other in disbelief. They don't know what's going on. The chef stepped in and told them why. He said that bread was first eaten by the poor. At this time, no one sitting here is poor, so there was no need to serve bread. It was clear that people couldn't accept this absurdity. They thought it was insulting. Only Tyler, who admired food as art, he thought there must be some kind of symbolism in it. Before the next dish, the chef said its name, Memory. He walked over to his mother, who had Alzheimer's. He told me about his childhood memories. When he was a child, his father used to beat his mother. The worst was when he tried to strangle her with an electric wire. In order to save his mother, he stabbed his father's thigh with a pair of scissors. While the crowd was sighing over his experience, the food was brought to the table. On the plate was a chicken leg with scissors stuck in it. What's even better? The accompanying tortillas were engraved with words and images. Each tortilla was customized. Tyler's is a photo of him secretly photographing the food. For the food critic, his bad reviews for the restaurant investor. It's about tax evasion. The tycoons were intimate photos of him and another woman. That's where it all went down. Everyone realized something was wrong. They don't understand what the chef is trying to do with his privacy. What he was trying to do with it. Margot found it extremely disrespectful. She tried to wave the tortillas back. But Tyler thinks he's lucky to be here. That he was lucky to be there. And he didn't want to be hated by the chef. So he ate the tortilla. Margot couldn't stand her behavior. She went to the bathroom to smoke a cigarette. But the chef came to her and asked her who she was. Why is she here? 
Margot's disdainful face was a direct response. From the beginning to the present, she was not happy with the chef's pretense and his lack of respect. When Marco returned to her seat, Marco returned to her seat just as the fourth course was being served. The waiter spread a white cloth on the floor and then decorated it with edible bouquets. And when it was done, a chef named Jamie stood in the center of the white cloth. The chef calls this dish chaos. It's all Jamie's creation. And as everyone stared to see what it was all about, Jamie fell in the middle of the white cloth. It's like an eerie portrait, and the crowd reacted just as the chef had said. It was chaos. No one could have predicted that a man would be killed at dinner. The frightened tycoon tried to leave immediately. If there's no yacht, then let the helicopter come and get him. But the waiter stopped him and ordered his bodyguard to chop off the ring finger of his left hand. It's been a long time coming. Now they finally realize this is a banquet. The other party has arranged everything from the beginning. They are all lambs to be slaughtered. class people came to eat Michelin luxury meal, who knew they'd become the chef's menu. The chef not only wanted money, but also their lives. The diners were getting out of hand. The chef came over and said that everyone had to die tonight, and the reason why he chose them? They were chosen because they just happened to be doing something they didn't like. Food critics have cost a lot of chefs their jobs. Movie stars in bad movies wasted his nice vacation, and the rich couple has eaten here 11 times, and can't even remember the name of one of the dishes. This is a serious insult to himself. Not not only has it sapped his passion for food, it's also taken away his pleasure in cooking. That's all. He asked the crowd to look outside. That's the investor of the restaurant for having questioned his menu. So now he's tied between two wings and he's falling into the lake until he's no more. While everyone was racking their brains, trying to figure out how to get out, the chef brought them all outside. He gave all the men 45 seconds to escape before he could finish his sentence. The men were running in all directions. When lives are at stake, family and friendship don't matter. Unfortunately, after 45 seconds, they were all recaptured without exception. All of them were put back in the cafeteria, and this time, the chef was going after Tyler, because a long time ago, Tyler has been writing letters, expressing his desire to come here, and he knew the secret that everyone would die tonight. But even so, he came with Marco, who didn't know, and Marco's presence, the chef's plans were thrown out of whack. Marco finally realized the truth. He was so angry. He pounced on Tyler, but Tyler was invited into the kitchen by the chef and asked him to make a dish. The inexperienced Tyler was a mess. The chef whispers something to him. I don't know what he whispered, but I could tell by the look in Tyler's eyes that he had lost his sparkle, that it must have been a fatal blow to him. Soon after, Tyler killed himself. Then the cook told Margot to find a vat. Instead, Margot broke into the cook's house when the waitress appeared behind her and complained that she had upset all their plans. And then he came at her with a knife. He tried to kill her. In the struggle, Margot got the upper hand. She killed the waiter. Then she saw the photographs of the chefs in the room. Each of them represented the highest honor. But of all the photos, only the one of him as a young man making burgers. He's got a big smile on his face. Looking around the room, Margot found the phone. So she called the police. When she got back to the restaurant, soon the sirens sounded. The police came quickly. And just when everyone thought they were finally safe, the police put a gun on a candle. It turned out to be a toy gun. And when the policeman took off his uniform, he was wearing a chef's uniform. Fooled again. Everyone's hopes were dashed. They're in a state of anxiety. Margo suddenly thought of something. She blurted it out. I don't like your food. What did you say? I said, I don't like your food, and I would like to send it back. You're a chef. Your single purpose on this earth is to serve people food that they might actually like, and you have failed. You failed, and you bored me. The worst part is, I'm still fucking hungry and asked the chef to make her a cheeseburger after all the hypocritical compliments she'd heard. Margot's demand for the food itself, and the chef got her back to her old self. He made Marco a cheeseburger himself because someone really needed it. He had never tasted being waited for or expected to do anything before. He couldn't help but smile, and Marco gave him feedback. She said the burger was delicious. She took out her crumpled money to pay for the meal and wished she could take it home. She wasn't expecting it. The chef, for the first time in his life, 
The creed, after Margo left, they were all dressed in marshmallow tops, hats made of chocolate. The last course, they were served on their own plates, when the floor had been drenched with various unknown liquids. The chef grabbed a ball of charcoal with his bare hands and threw it on the floor. Sparks flew everywhere. The fire engulfed the entire restaurant. No one survived. This is a horror movie coming out in 2023, but the movie is more satirical than scary. The movie is more satirical. The chef is a madman. He uses his food to satirize the diners who are not what they seem. Only the poor girl who aroused him is lucky to escape. Those who like to praise his in-depth of meaning. Those who don't like him criticize his pomposity and emptiness. What do you think?